Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters, friends and families. Good to be here again, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with you. Welcome to our Sunday ministration. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. My name is Pastor Femi Alara of Living in the World International Church. It please where we preach Christ and die and we receive the keys to fulfill our destinies. And my prayer is that you shall fulfill your destiny in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, we'll be looking at a series of teaching this month tied to total recovery. And our anchor scripture or prophetic scripture for the month has come from the books of 4 Samuel chapter 30, you read verse 8. And this is after David inquired of the Lord. And he said to the Lord, Lord, shall I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover all? And the Lord said to him, go, pursue. You shall overtake and surely recover all. Now, that scripture brings scripture brings a lot of things to my mind. One of the things it brings to my mind is very simple. Number one, there's not it's not every battle that you have to fight. It's not every um, endeavor that you have to pursue. Because there's some things that will just be a waste of your resources, time, energy, and so on and so forth. But when the Lord gives you the go-ahead, though you might face challenges on the way, though you might face issues on the way, the Lord has said, pursue, you will overtake, and you will recover all. My prayer for you is that whatever you have lost to the enemy, you shall recover. Most of us have lost our families, our children, our home, our jobs, our career. Some of us are still wailing under the effect of the COVID-19, the pandemic, the virus. Businesses were shut down, sources of income, livelihood, people were laid off, and so on and so forth. And this kind of thing sometimes affect us mentally, emotionally, physically, materially, financially. And so on and so forth. And each and every one of us have areas of our life where we would like to recover the things that the enemy have stolen. John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus did not mind his words when he said, The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There's some profound statement that Jesus Christ made about the devil. Now, one of them is John chapter 10, verse 10. Another one is found in John chapter 8, verse 44, where he said, The devil is the father of lies. So deception is the order of the day. He will lie and he keep lying. Even when he's caught in a lie, he will find a lie to actually overcome the previous lie. And that is what the devil does. So today we want to recover all stolen property. Life is going to be full of challenges. We are going to face challenges. And most of the time, the reason why we are fallen prey is because we are not cognizant or we're not aware. The Bible says, do not be ignorant of the advice of the enemy. When you're close to a breakthrough, that's when he will give you the hardest temptation or the hardest challenge. And this is, important, this is so important because I've seen many Christians fail at the edge of success. My prayer for you this morning is begin to examine your life. Look at what you have lost. Take a stock of what you have. Sometimes you have to cut your losses. Sometimes you have to pursue to overtake and recover all. My prayer for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will not lose that which God has given unto you because it's fully, it's duly yours. Let us pray as we hear the word of the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for the success of last week. I want to thank you for the blessings of a new week. Thank you, Lord, because you helped us in all our challenges, in all our ways. You do not leave us to the will of our enemies. You do not allow the enemy to prevail over our lives. We are still here in the land of the living, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. You, O oh Lord, have been faithful to each and every one of us, regardless of whatever we are facing part time. Savior of the world, I just want to thank you again for the privilege of life, of knowing you as our Lord and Savior. Father, I pray that this morning as we sit at your feet, that you open our understanding, that you increase us in knowledge of you, that you give us the grace and the ability to pursue and overtake and recover all the enemy has stolen. And I pray that the words that we shall hear shall mingle with faith in our hearts, pray for good fruits in our lives, to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief. Another name for the devil is the thief. He steals. And he makes no shame of that, that he steals. Anyone who has ex ever experienced any form of burglary or anything can tell you how painful that experience can be, and how it can affect you psychologically, how you begin to feel about yourself, things you ought to have done that you did not do, and so on and so forth. The thief coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
the thief, the devil. The Bible says the devil, your adversary, is going around like a royal lion, seeking whom he's going to devour. May you not fall victim to his antics. Now, the devil has methods, methodologies that he uses. Oftentimes, they say you cannot teach a, a whole dog a new trick. So in certain ways and patterns that the devil uses, and they have just been modernized, repackaged, but it's the same product in the box. And that's why it's important that we study the scriptures to understand how the devil, the model of Pandi of the devil, how he works. Now, for example, the devil uses your friend as a tool to steal. Very simply. Friends are people that you trust, people that you rely on, people that you turn to for help. People that you, you know, you confide in. Your secrets are with your friends, especially depending, depending what kind of closeness or level of friendship you have the person. And the devil uses that as a tool to steal. Ah, believe me, David made a statement in I think Psalm 55, verse 12 to 14. He talks about if it was just a, a man that he did not know that, you know, stole from him or did something to him. He said he would not mind. But somebody that he shared fellowship with, somebody that you spent time in the house of God with, somebody that you went to, you know, um, mighty men's meeting or greater women's uh, convention or so on and so forth. You know, the people that you allowed into your home, trusted, They've opened your fridge, you lift their feet up on your table, and they've eaten food with you, share communion with you, you trusted them. And when those kind of people, you, the devil goes inside of them, they become a tool in the hands of the enemy. Let me give an example. At the communion table, the account of John, in books of John, the Bible talks about Satan entering into, the, into, into Judas. Judah was meant to be a disciple, was meant to be a friend, was someone, someone that was close. He was not outside the 12. Remember, there's 12, there's the 70. There are other disciples as well. <laughs> but the 12 were the core of Jesus' ministry. They handled their affairs. As a matter of fact, the Bible makes us understand that G Judas was the treasurer of the ministry. In other words, he handled the money. And you don't give your money to somebody you don't trust. But yet, he was the person that betrayed him. And he hurts. He hurts really badly. So one of the things that we as Christians must be vigilant about is kind of friends that we keep. When I was a little boy, my parents we used, to, used to say, show me your friend, I will tell you who you are. I've said it many times, my friend is somebody that is going the same direction as me. One day, my wife accused me of being antisocial. <laughs> I said, no, no, I'm not antisocial. I just keep my friends very carefully. Because if I allow everything to come and hurry into my life, I will get myself into trouble. Well, if you look at my phone, I have a list of people, or multiple people I can be calling on a daily basis. Some of them will even want to cultivate friendship with me. I keep them at harm's length. Let me, let me know the kind of person you are first. Because there's so many people who are green snake under the green grass. You, you, you got, they are just waiting for the opportune moment to strike. So let me not spend too long there. Friendship. And it comes also sometimes uh, with deceptions. So they will deceive you with sweet words. Deceive you with things that sounds good. Only to set a trap for you. The fact is many of us are not sensitive enough to understand that there are so many people who are jealous of where we are. I said it some time ago to a group of people. I said, where you are is somebody else's prayer point. You might not believe that. Where you currently are, that is somebody else's prayer point to be where you are. I mean, I was preaching on the subject of Thanksgiving, and I was telling them that, uh, you know, let's be grateful regardless of whatever you are. You say, well, a man sleeping on the street in London during winter, you're thinking he's happy and he's, he's, he's thinking, oh, uh, where I am is where somebody wants to be. I said, believe me, there are people who are risking their lives across the sea. The, 
across the desert to get into England. I'm sure you've seen the videos on TV, on YouTube, how migrants will cry as much as possible, go through Libya, which is war-torn, and get enslaved. They will go through across the sea. Some of them will drown just to get into Europe and whatever means possible. So a man that's already sleeping on the streets, he's already inside Europe, inside England. That's completely different. So that's in somebody else's prayer point. You know what I'm saying? So we all have different levels. So I think I don't want to spend too long on that. Number, number two is that there they, they are corruptions. There are corrupt friends. The Bible talks about Demas in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. It said, Demas has forsaken me. Have a love the present world. Corruption, corrupt friends. They are filthy. James chapter 4, 1 to 4. Corrupt friends. Who will try and infiltrate your personality because they want to hold you something. They want to hold something over you, like a blackmail, in quote. So you have to be careful the kind of people you hang around with. Another methodology of the devil is that he uses confusion. You pass through circumstances and love of life and you're wondering, why is this happening to me? Because in the midst of confusion, when you don't have a clear thought, you don't have a clear thinking, you have no, you have wrong advice, you're bound to make wrong decisions, almost certainly. For example, you read the story of Job. Now, Job was supposed to be a perfect man. You can read his testimony, the books of Job, the first few verses of the books of Job, chapter 1, tells us the kind of person Job was. So before any of us start going off a tangent and saying, Oh, Job uh, must have done something. Oh, he's a bad person. Oh, he did this. He's suffering for his past mistakes. How did he acquire his wealth? And so on and so forth. The Bible says he was a perfect man. God himself testified of him. He's a perfect man. He even sacrificed before they even made, they made the sin. By adventure, they had done something. But you know what happened? In the midst of his trials and confusion, his friends began to say many things about what he has done. And God had to teach him a lesson to say, don't get bitter with them. That's why God turned around the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend, Job 42, verse 10. You know the scripture. Now, the second avenue is your family. Now, family is something that you cannot do without, whether you're married or you're unmarried. You have friends. You have, you have family. You have brothers, you have sisters, that you have your siblings. And these are people that usually you have no guard against because they are people you feel you grew up in the same house, you ate the same food, you were raised by the same parent. I'm sure many of us have heard about brotherly rivalry. There was a time that some, some two brothers came to Jesus. They said to Jesus, he said, Jesus, tell my brother to share the wealth with me. He said, who makes me the judge between you two? So they couldn't sit down amicably to share to share the property. We've heard the story of the prodigal son. They are completely two different men. One served the father, the other one said, give me the inheritance now. You know the stories. So a family is also one way, an avenue that the devil penetrates to steal from us. I remember some time ago when I was speaking to um Someone, I try, I try not to mention names. And we were talking about money. And he said, most of the time that he has lost money are true family members who have approached him needing help. And he has gone out of his way to help them. And in the long run, he's the one that ended up paying for it. And I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, they're my family. There's nothing I can do. But those are the people that can really get into you. Because even if you try to say no, they will have to use the blackmail. We are brothers. We are sisters. We are related. And as a result of that, you get yourself into, into challenges. Another avenue the devil uses is called business. 
he gets us preoccupied with nothing. And I, I say this, I'm using my own as, myself as an example. I sat down one day, I was on the computer, and I found myself flipping from one page to another until I, I spoke to myself. Absolutely doing nothing. There was no aim, there was nothing. I was not achieving anything. I was just flipping from one tab to another, and I was like, hold on, what am I doing? Because busyness steals time. You're busy doing what? What are you doing? Nothing. If it's not destiny, it is distraction. Or what is easy for you to say, if you have something that you want to do, perhaps that, that is the time for you to invest in finding out what your vision or your purpose is on earth. You see, if you're too busy and you're not seeing any output, something is wrong somewhere. Somebody is stealing your time. Because one of the things business does is you begin to procrastinate certain things that are supposed to happen now. I'll do it later. One week later, it's not yet done. I'll do it later. Two weeks later, it's not yet done. I'll do it later. Three weeks later, it's not yet done. Before you know it, you've lost interest. You have no idea in it. Or that thing becomes no relevant. Sometimes many of us are too busy, centered on the wrong thing. You're fighting battles you ought to have forgotten and abandoned and let it be. So let sleeping dog lie. Pursue, overtake is an instruction from God. Sometimes God did not say pursue. You're pursuing out of your own personal volition. told my wife some time ago, and I said, you have to look at the situation and see that God is with us. Because every time I've needed something, there's always supply there. I said, there are challenges that you will face across the earth, across the pathway, but as it goes forward, you keep, you keep knowing that God is God. Number three, another avenue is laziness. Anything that is worthwhile will require hard work. It will require dedication, it will require commitment, anything. Nobody builds a house using his mouth. There's a process that he has to go through to get that thing done. And as a result of that, most of us, we are lazy in building relationship and anything that we leave would deteriorate with time. And I've seen a lot of things fall into decadence because we have simply abandoned it. If I ask most of us, we're not approaching the half of the year 2022, what is the vision that you set out for 2022? Have you accomplished it? Or have you even started it? If the answer is yes, fantastic. If the answer is no, then go back and check what you wrote in January. What was the vision for 2022? In a few days' time, we're going to be at the end of June. Officially, that's to be half of the year done. And none of us will ever get that time back. So if you are trying to be lazy, you will not make full profit of your destiny. Another avenue that the devil uses is that we are forgetful. And that's why the Bible says, write down the vision, make it plain. So he that read it, he may be able to run with it. What did you write down? Is it clear for anybody to pick it up? Because when you write it down, not only do you, are you able to see what you are you're writing, what you want to accomplish, but you also able to motivate the people around you to help you. And long after you're gone, it can also help those that want to bring about the vision to pass or continue the legacy you've begun. Psalms said in the book of Psalm 103, verse 2, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Because many of us forget. Because we live on the moment. We live in the moment, rather. We live in the moment. What has gone down for me recently? Another 
the new is that it causes us to neglect what is key. A father walks out on his child at the age of five, and at the age of 35, he comes back into the, man, into the, into the man's life, and then he's saying, let's pick up from where we left off. He's no longer a junior that you put on your lap and say, how are you, how's the day, how's the day? He's not a grown man, only perhaps he has his own wife and children. You can't neglect a man for 30 years and expect him to have the same kind of relationship with you when you were five. It's not possible. You can't neglect the Lord, your relationship with him, and expect it to be the same and say more, say more. Relationship moves. I've said that many times. Another area that the devil uses to steal from us is we are bitter about the past. And I've said it many times, except you invent a time machine, there's no point in worrying about the past. The past is gone. Today is the day that you can make decisions, decisions that will affect your tomorrow. So the past is forever gone. Let's make most of today. Most of us have defiled our spirit through bitterness. He gives the devil opportunity to run, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. seen many homes as being destroyed as a result of bitterness because the spirit of forgiveness is not functioning in the house and love is not functioning in the heart of the people. Bitterness is like cancer to the, to the body. Bitterness is to the soul what cancer is to the body. It's like poison. Somebody said home forgiveness is like drinking poison and opening that person down. It kills you, not them. We don't want to be contaminated. We don't want to be defiled. And that's why we must stay clear of wrath, anger, bitterness, or evil speaking. They all work in tandem with each other. You see, the devil is like a rat. Sorry to use that word. Once you have a little hole, it might be a pin. Give it time. I give. I, I. I lie to you not. Give it time. That same hole will become as big as that. Why? Because the rat will simply boil over it with time. Boil over it with time. Boil over it with time. Until it becomes massive enough for them to be able to eat as they want, come in as they want, feel as they feel like it. So many of us who have allowed little things to become a mighty thing as a result of bitterness in our house or in our heart, sorry, in our hearts. I'm praying for you, whatever it is that the devil has used to stop us <laughs> from assessing the very best of God in our lives today, it will be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Another avenue that the devil uses is very simple, is defeats, past failures. Let me use that word. Virtually every single person has faced one form of defeat on, on, or another. Now, I will say this, and I know many of us have heard the statement before. God does not lose a battle. That is incorrect. God can lose a battle for him to win the war. A war is a war campaign is a series of battles. A battle can last just one day. A war campaign can last for years. For example, the Ukraine and the Russian war is a war campaign. There have been series of battles in different aspects or different parts of the country. But the war is still going on. And it can be fought economically. It can be fought with uh, weapons like, of mass destruction and so on and so forth. It's keep going. So sometimes when God allows us to go through defeat temporarily, it's not because he hates us. It's because sometimes he gives us a reality check, humbles us. Because if you're riding on your high horse, sometimes you begin to think by strength, would you prevail? Oh, my wisdom did that. My own understanding did that. My own this did that. You don't know that was God who was backing you up. 
Many of us have gone through phases of challenges that we feel like the devil has an upper hand. I'm praying for you that this morning you will cry to the Lord with all of, all of your heart and you begin to cry to him for help. Because some of us just need to repent from pride, in quote. And then cry to him. Let me give an example. Samson was a man who had, I mean, unusual strength. Let me use the word. He was a superman. He was a man's man. I mean, Samson is, he, he tore a lion. He destroyed once with the jawbone of an ass. He carried the gate of a city. He caught a hundred, I say, a thousand foxes, and then he tied them up, and, and so on and so forth. He did come some things. He Samson. So he began to mess around with sin. And God gave him grace, he gave him opportunity to retire, to repent, but he kept misusing it. Until finally, the devil, the devil was allowed to trap him. And the first thing the devil did, gave him an irrecoverable um, dent. He plucked out his eyes first. I don't know why the devil thought of that one, but if you, if you, <laughs> that should tell you that the devil shows no mercy. So he plucked out his eyes. That means no matter how strong he will be, if he can't see what you're fighting, he will be nothing but a sitting duck. Can God give him a new eyes? Absolutely. God can do that. With God, all things are possible. So I don't put that past God. But once he got to his lowest state, he became an object of ridicule that people were, were calling to come and entertain them. It was somebody that... that his name brought fear to their heart. An entire army will be shivering. They say, Samson is coming. Suddenly, he became a man. They were saying, go and bring him out of the dungeon. Let's, let's use him for let's use him for the entertainment. And then he cried to the Lord. So his temporary defeat only lasted until he came to his senses. And then he cried to the Lord. And they said, the, the number of people he killed that day Outweigh the amount he has killed in his lifetime. Read the books of Judges. Start from 14 and read about 17. So we are getting to a stage where our dependency must be on God and God alone. Our faith must be in Him and Him alone. The devil will try to plant thoughts in your head. Believe it or not. And that brings me to my, I think my final point. One of the days, one of the ways the devil steals from us is by planting thoughts. It's very subconscious. Uh, it's just very innocent. There was a story of an, in the scripture, a man who had a farm. Suddenly, they said the, the enemy came, sowed tears in the, among the wheat, and then went about his ways. The enemy that sowed tears among the wheat did not do it with the intention of the next day something will happen. He did it with the intention of, I will wait if tears will grow, the wheat also will grow, and then we will wait for it. There's some things that the devil has planted in your mind. I was watching a, a program, um, I think a movie some years ago. It's called The Truman Show, Jim Carrey, I believe. Uh, he was a boy that was a, a man that was born in front of the TV. He grew up in front of the TV. His life was the basically the show. If you have the time, watch the movie. But something the producer said that caught my attention was this. They created in him a phobia for water so that he will always run back. He can't cross a bridge where there's water. He creates, he, he burns his heart. He, he, sorry, he, he, he gets afraid. His heart begins to shake. He begins to panic. And the reason they created the phobia, even as a child, is so that when he grows older, he to leave the studio because his life is actually revolves around the studio. Sometimes the devil plants a thought in our mind. Not because of anything immediate, but something in the future. Some of us right now resent male authority 
as women. And because you saw something as a child, not because you had anything about a wife submitting to your husband, and you hate that scripture because you think it's not supposed to be in the scriptures. Or you resent having a boss. You can't work under any man or under any, under any, any woman. Or some of us have phobias. You wonder where did you get it from? It could be for height. That's why you can't fly in a plane. It could be for anything. The thoughts were planted in your head, even as a child, not for anything. Because the devil wants to reap and have it when he grows older. Now, I will say a lot of this. How do I protect myself and my family from the attempts of the devil to steal? Let me begin to close the sermon. I think we're fast spent tonight. Number one, very simply, we dedicate yourself to God and to Him alone. Most of us, we have gone astray from the path of righteousness as a result of the fact that we simply become so self-dependent, self, um, self-sustaining. The Bible makes us understand clearly, by strength shall no man prevail. We have now depended on our own strength, our own understanding, our own wisdom. And as a result of that, we are simply becoming <laughs> uh, sitting ducks in there for the devil to pick up. I've said it many times, you cannot smart the devil in doing evil. Number two. You must know what the devil, the avenue that the devil is using to get into your life. I've mentioned several today. You need to sit down and do an analysis of what aspect the devil is using. Is it your family? Is it your children? Are you too busy? Do you find yourself with wrong company? The Bible says in the books of 1 Samuel chapter, oh, sorry, Psalm, Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that sitting on in the council of the ungodly. So ask yourself, is it the, am I in the council of, of the ungodly? Is there something? Because you need to find out precisely what area of your life that the, the enemy is coming into. Once you can figure that out, you can't really make, or else you'll be shooting at a random and hoping to hit the target. And often that leads to frustration because it seems like you're banging your head against a brick wall. Let me move on. Number three is rebuild relationship. Rebuild relationships. Whether we're friends, whether we uh, family, whether we work colleagues, rebuild the relationship. It will cost you something. And then take a stop. I mean, you don't meet a man today and begin to divulge all your life secrets to that person. Um, so, so I was speaking to my uh, family, really, my uh, family of mine, and I said to them, I said, don't, because you are seeking one information, give out five. For example, it's your name. And you've told them your name, you've told them your age, you've told them what you do for a living, you've told them where you live. All you ask is for what is your name. They, they will gladly tell you what their name is, but nothing else. But you've given five information away. You know, I've seen people who have gotten involved in discussions that has nothing to do with you, with them, and they've ended up giving themselves over to the enemy. I think it was um, Joyce Meyer, the uh, man of God, said something one day that uh, caught my attention. He said that the devil probably knows 20%, and God obviously knows 100%. But because you can't keep information, if God reveals everything to you, you'll probably diverge into the, to the enemy's hand. So increasing the capacity of what the devil knows. So therefore, God sometimes withhold information from us, not because he does not love us, but because he simply cannot trust us to handle the information yet. Now, let me begin to close. Number four, faith. Faith, develop your faith. Keep developing your faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. Keep developing your faith. Greater is he that's in you than the one that's in the world. Keep developing your faith. You can do exceedingly abundantly above anything you think and ask of according to the power that working in us. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Keep developing your faith. 
Grow in understanding. Grow in faith. Grow in becoming all that God has called you to be. Number four, number four. Number five is learn from your past mistakes and defeats. Every one of us, a child that, was, that is learning to walk will fall a few times. The Bible makes us understand that the righteous man falls seven times. He gets up seven times. So even the books of Micah tells us, he said, do not rejoice over me, my enemy, for when I fall, I shall rise again. Doesn't make any difference. But learn from those mistakes. Don't keep repeating it. One of the definitions of insanity is that you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. I'm praying for you, and the name is above every name, that you will not fall into the same error in the name of Jesus Christ. The fact is also you can learn from the experiences of others. If you know, like Samson, if you're around sin, eventually you'll get entrapped. So stay away from sin. You know if you have covetousness, you will not have peace. Do that as an example. There are examples who have gone ahead of us to help us. You know you have to stay the course, or else you will end up having an issue outside your, before your eyes it comes. It's written in the scriptures. God did not fail. He waited 25 years. If only waited two. I think after 25 years of waiting, you can then say, God, <laughs> hold on, how come you're not answering the prayer yet? God is faithful. Now, let me begin to close. John chapter 10, verse 10. I'll close where I began. The thief, and the thief is no longer but the devil, comes to steal. That means you have something valuable. Comes to destroy. That means you have built something. No, or all comes to steal to kill. That means you have life. You have something living. You can't kill something that's not alive. If it's dead, it's already gone. And destroyed something valuable that you have built up. Every one of us have something that's valuable. Every someone, one of us have something that is of good quality. I look at yourself in the mirror and say, ah, look at this life. Look at what I have. Nothing to write them about. Like I said earlier, what you have right now is somebody else's prayer point. My prayer for you is that number one, you begin to value where you are, value who you are, value what you have. Because believe it or not, it is valuable. And if you leave it carelessly or neglect it, not only will the devil steal, steal it, he will make you pay an empty price to recover it. And I pray that you will not lose anything valuable to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Savior of the word, I want to thank you for this morning's word and I want to give you thanks and praises again because you have taught us, increased us, our understanding of you, who we are in you, and how the devil operates. Father, I pray in the name that's above every name that today, Lord, everything we have lost, we shall recover it all. Every siege, oh Lord, everything the enemy has stolen, whosoever has stolen anything from us, through whatever means they have used, Father, in the name of Jesus, we shall recover it all. I pray for your wisdom. I pray for knowledge. I pray for understanding to know about what we should go about uh, pursuing and what we are going to be able to recover. Again, I want to ask, oh Lord, that this week will be blessed. As we go forth, we go forth in your name, that you will lead and direct our footsteps. That none of us will fail, none of us will fall. We will not become victims of evil circumstances. The devil will not rob us of our goodness, our joy, our peace. That, Father, wherever we go, Father, we shall meet with your good, the goodwill of men and women. In the name of Jesus Christ. The steps of the righteous are ordered. May our footsteps be ordered. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break for every chain around our lives that's holding us bound and keeping us limited. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That the heavens of our head shall be opened. That showers of blessing will fall in our lives. Lord, I bring the offering of your children before you. Let it be blessed. Let it be sanctified and used for your glory. Thank you, Lord, because I know you hear us always. We give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all in Jesus' precious name. A few announcements. To give an offering, please visit our website, www.litwick.org, L-I-T-W-I-C.org. You can give your offering online. And also the BAX transfer details are within the description of the sermon. You can make also BAX transfer. Secondly, there's a Bible study tonight. Please join us for the Bible study so that we can all 
the reason together. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron, a man's countenance the sharpened of his friend. Um, number three, there'll be a midweek service on Wednesday as we conclude the series of teaching. And I pray that God himself will speak to us in a way that's clear and precise in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, subscribe to the channel, invite somebody and spread the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Good day to you. Bye-bye.